Hi, I'm Lynn. And I'm Stuart. And we're High Five Pig. Yes, we are. And that's the cat just gone. <laughs> um, we are. We missed last week because we had a storm. We did. A uh, storm queue. Yes. And we had no electricity, no nothing, no communications. Uh, everything's all right. Uh, I think parts of the town are still down, aren't they? I think they yeah they might have got some most of them back on by now but there was trees everywhere it's complete chaos um i don't think anybody was injured locally which is good but yeah it was quite a serious tempet it was quite serious <laughs> yeah and the week before that we were at the warsaw audio video show which was absolutely brilliant we've got our um reports from the show which i'll put links down below as usual uh don't forget to uh do the whole subscribe and like and all that kind of thing thank you very much um we've got a bit of a different show this week because whilst we were in warsaw it seems that long ago doesn't yeah, it yeah it seems like years ago now. we did a few interviews in the bar um they're a bit grainy and what have you because it was dark but uh, we've got some quite cool interviews in there with for for you um, but it's a little bit of a different show this week because we've got absolutely masses to go through. Um, ah, while I remember, we are wearing our Slalom D t-shirts. Yes. Um, we've got friends that uh, are based in the northeast of England, in Sunderland. And they're a bit of a punk band, well, they're a lot of a punk band. And our mate that we've known for 30 odd years, uh, Fee, is the singer. So this is their record. Go out and buy it. It's absolutely brilliant. It's uh... You can get it on um, Bandcamp. If you go to Serial Bowl Records, Serial as in Serial Killer, Bowl as in what you put your cereal in. Not your Serial Killer. <laughs> Not your Serial Killer. Um, on Bandcamp, you can buy it there. We've and you got... can buy T-shirts. Yeah, you can buy T-shirts. So, And it's just a brilliant record. So... It is. It's great. We listened to it the other night and uh, it's always good to support bands that you're into and go and buy their albums their merchandise and all the rest so there you go anyway as i said it's a bit of a different show this week we are going to discuss uh, the news that we've got for you now but here's the news cirrus has announced the arrival of brand new stereo power amplifiers for both the xr and classic rangers these new class a b stereo amplifiers have a lower noise floor than in previous power amps from cirrus the Power XR is priced in the UK at £2,995 and the Classic Power at £2,395. Both products are now available to pre-order with deliveries expected from the beginning of December. The new English Electric EE1 Network Noise Isolator sits between streaming components and is designed to reduce noise in hi-fi and AV systems. Costing £250, this is the third product from the English Electric brand by the Cord Company. First seen last year at the Northwest Audio Show, the Etude 5 has now gone into production. The Etude 5 speaker features a linear array of four 85mm balance mode radiator drive units. Made in the UK and costing from £13,000 for the standard finishers, the cabinets are finished in high gloss piano lacquer applied by Shackleford Pianos, a leading piano restoration workshop based in Macclesfield, Cheshire. Ever Solo has announced the new DMP A8 streaming preamplifier. It features a fully balanced R2R analogue volume control and has both RCA and fully balanced XLR analogue inputs. The DAC is the AKM Velvet Sound Veritat DAC. It also features a full DSP processor with individual configuration profiles for the source of your choice. The power supply has been divided into two stages, with one powering the audio circuitry and the other stage powering the digital circuitry. It will cost £1,890 with shipping expected by the end of November. The Magico M7 was conceived by founder and CEO Elon Wolf as a more accessible version of the semi-active M9. The all-passive Magico M7 is a four-way, six-driver, floor-standing loudspeaker with the latest Magico drive unit technology, an organically shaped carbon fibre and aluminium enclosure, and the latest elliptical symmetry crossover. With an estimated shipping date of Q1 2024, the M7 costs 375,000 US dollars per pair, 
and in the UK the price is £450,000. The Messe Audio Imperian 2 are the Romanian hi-fi brand's newest planar magnetic headphones. Building on the design of the original Empyrean, Meze Audio engineers have further refined the driver design from Renaro Isodynamics. They come in a matte black finish with silver accents and a redesigned aluminium grille is inspired by Art Deco. With bespoke new ear pads, Empyrean 2 are available for pre-order with a retail price of $2,999 or Euros or £2,749. British hi-fi brand Network Acoustics has introduced their flagship Ethernet switch, the Network Acoustics Tempus. Network Acoustics developed Tempus as a complete system, with equal attention paid to both the design of the switch and its dedicated power supply. Network Acoustics say that they found that effectively separating the power supply from the signal clocking and output is the critical factor when designing an Ethernet switch for high-end music and video streaming. Available in silver or black and on sale now, the Tempest cost £3,995 in the UK. Cartridge manufacturer Autophon has announced the Autophon 2MR Moving Magnet Range, which takes the existing 2M cartridge and reshapes it into a new reduced housing that makes it compatible with a wider range of tone arms. 2MR reduces the overall cartridge body height to 14mm, saving 3mm over the standard version making them easily fit tone arms from Lin, Rager, Project and others where the VTA is not adjustable and the regular 2M cartridge height is too high. Available this month, the range costs from £95 for the red to £829 for the LVB250. The new products from Project are the Tubebox DS3B dual mono phono preamplifier and two new step-up transformers the Project MC Step-Up Box DS3B and the Project MC Step-Up Box S3. These are the first step-up transformers from Project and are designed to add flexibility and convenience to analogue systems. The Tube Box DS3B is £949. The MC Step-Up Box DS3B is £799 and the MC Step-Up Box S3 is £399. All models will begin shipping during November 2023 and are available through Henley Audio's dealer network. All right, that was the uh, that was the news that was. That was. It was. Um, there's loads of stuff in there that's really interesting, and I think obviously you've got the Magico speakers, which are about three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. Yes. Four hundred and. Four hundred fifty thousand pounds ish in the UK. So. Quite an expensive speaker, wherever you are. Wherever you are in the world, yes. Um, but I've actually started to like Magico speakers quite a lot. Yeah, we've been enjoying them quite a bit, especially with um, Very Fine Solutions, um, Frank's setups at a couple of shows we've been to recently, because he was um, helping out in the MSB Magico room at Warsaw and also at the Dutch Audio events, their yes, room was with and Magico. I imagine Magico will also be making a show at the Deluxe Audio Show in March that Chris and I organise um, with Absolute Sounds. Yes. So if you're in England, you'll get a chance to listen to them as well. Don't know which ones they'll be bringing, but they'll be bringing Bound some. Bound to bring some of them. But what I thought were quite interesting, and these were at the Northwest Audio Show, uh, as you mentioned, the Etude Five Five loudspeakers. They're about thirteen grand. They look really good value for money. They look beautiful as well. And Chris has had them finished. He's he's got his first, I think, four pairs available now. Um, so he's a boutique producer. Um, but the, the finish on them is incredible. He's had them done by Shackleford Pianos. So it's a proper piano finisher that's done the piano gloss on them it's incredible finish so yeah so they'll look real attention to detail so they'll look brilliant anyway we're going to go into a, an interview uh it's in black and white it's a little bit grainy it's with vivian Feliz of esprit cables a french company um that we have known for a few years vivian took over Crikey, about a year and a half ago, two years ago. In the middle of COVID, wasn't it? In the middle yeah. of COVID. And we met him in this uh, cafe in the middle of nowhere, just as we'd been allowed out. Anyway, this is Vivian.
from Esprit Cables. There you go. Who is Esprit? The story behind Esprit. Uh, Esprit exists since uh, 1997. It's a French uh, company mm -hmm. uh, who made a uh, high-end uh, audio cable for the hi-fi system. Uh, it's totally made in France. And uh, Richard Cesari, the founder, uh, is the actual founder. It's not changed. Uh, he developed since many, many years different generation of cable. He developed the technology about the chilling, about the polarization of insulator, and etc. etc. And now uh, we have uh, the first position in the French market for the middle and the high range. And uh, currently we export in uh, maybe 25 different countries. Okay. So how important is the made in France aspect of its pre cables? How many? How important to the brand it's, is the it's, fact that yes, you have made in France? It's, it's, it's really important. Uh, the made in France is totally unmade. Okay, we don't have uh, copper mineral. Okay, mm -hmm. it's not possible. But we select year after year. We select the best elements like the copper, the silver, and different parts of the cable. And uh, all elements are to, um, directly sent to the workshop. And uh, currently we have between five and six person who make cable every day. And uh, it's really, really important for Esprit to keep this philosophy totally unmade in France. Uh, all cable are developed and uh, the production is in Charente, just near between Cognac and Bordeaux. Okay, that's the Charente, yeah. You're yes, in the Charente, yes, yeah? yes, in the Charente. Okay, so this is your first time at uh, the Warsaw Show? Yes, yes, this is the first time because uh, we have a new partnership with uh, Audiomix. Okay, and what, what, new, what products uh, have they brought to the show? Uh, it distributes, uh, it's a premium reseller of MBL, oh, okay. uh, Macintosh, Focal, uh, and other, other stuff, other brands. And he uh, distributes SPK Ball for And you're over the, um, the stadium, yeah? No, I'll present it here ah, okay. in uh, Radisson Blue. Ah, okay. Just here. So what room are you in? The room uh, 106. Big first, room. First floor. A big room? Big room, nice room. Okay. And what do you think of the show? The show is big, as there are many visitors, and you feel you feel good things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody is really uh, focused on the hi-fi products. It's very positive as well. Yes. I always thought the, uh, the, the people that turn up are, are always really enthusiastic, really yes, yes. Uh, want to know more about products and really interested in the products and all the rest of it. Yeah. So anything else you want to add? No, just uh, enjoy your visit. I shall try, but I've brought the wife this time, uh, Vivian. <laughs> so uh, I was I was going to bring uh, Mrs. Licorice from uh, Wet Wang in the East Riding of Yorkshire, but she was unable to, uh, to, to come with us because, well, I'll not go into too much detail, but her husband's having some trouser issues. Uh, but we're going to go into that in a different show. So thank you ever so much, Vivian, thank you for of this uh, Esprit Cables. Uh, we do have a set of um, Esprit Cables in for review, which we hopefully will get done by the end of the year. So that will be on High Five Pig in the review section. All right, Vivian, what a character. Uh, and he's such a nice bloke as well. He's a, if you ever get to meet him at a show, go and say hello to him. He'll chat to you. He's a lovely guy. And I thought he took the... Um, me talking about Mrs. Licorice from Wet Wanging in the East, Ride of, the East Riding of Yorkshire very well. And the trouser incident. And the trouser incident. <laughs> which there will be more on the trouser incident. In, all will be revealed. Well, hopefully not all will be revealed about. So what else in the news uh, yeah. caught your eye? There's the Cirrus. They, Cirrus have been so busy recently. They've been putting out a lot of new products, including the new turntable, that, which we actually saw at... Uh, that the, looks brilliant. Yes really really good but they've got two new power amps out they've got the power xr and the classic power both are under three grand they've got the classic cirrus look so i mean the the look across all the ranges is seamless so good yeah, luck with them yeah looks be really cool very popular um, i think we have also covered the autophon 2mr range of cartridges and from about 98 quid yeah, 98, 95 quid, I think, for the red. They go yeah. from there, but um, really interesting. And basically, they're not quite as high. Uh, now, 
the art is for reduced um a lot of people when we put this up on social media they said uh, they mean Riga don't they <laughs> so yeah it sort of uh, enables them to be easily fitted without shims and all that kind of thing for Riga arms some lin arms other arms as well no faffing about no faffing about through Henley Audio in the UK uh, I we don't actually use autophone cartridges on the main system, but I've been using autophone gold cartridges on Concord Gold uh, for DJing. Uh, There's part of the nightclub series, and they're absolutely brilliant. Anyway, the next interview we've got up for you is Wim. Wim from Key. Wim from Key, and he's going to be talking a little bit about the Key 7 speakers, which we've heard now a couple of times. Yeah. At Warsaw and in Eindhoven. Yep. And both times we've been blown a bit blown away by them. Um, so here's me, I think. Or is it me? Or is it you? <laughs> Talking to Wim from Key. Hi, well I'm here again with uh, Wim from Key. Yeah, so, thank you very uh, much for having me. Yeah, it's nice to see you here. So yep. we just saw Wim at the Eindhoven show um, where you launched the Key 7s. Exactly, yeah. And they've also brought the Key 7s over to Warsaw. So exactly. Do you want to yeah. tell us a little bit more about them? Yeah, Key 7s is exciting because it was a great, great challenge to design a smaller speaker than the Key 3s and have it the exact same sound signature, right? So that was a, quite a challenge for Bruno. Uh, but he managed. And um, if we look at the audience, right, you don't have to say anything. It's just playing the see music the and then see the reaction. Yeah. And that's exactly what we meant to do with the Key 7 because the, the target group of the Key 7 is a way different one than the Key 3 and the Big C's. Okay. Because it needs to be more convenient, it needs to be more up to the modern standards into a today's living room. How Meaning, do you think it's fair to call these a more lifestyle kind of Exactly, product? exactly, because you can connect it wireless, wired if you want to, Spotify Connect, Tidal Connect, uh, Rune Endpoint, uh, Bluetooth, whatever, whatever you like, you can do it. The Apple AirPlay 2, it's all in there, yeah. crammed in a little box, yeah. and and it sounds great. And then, the, and then you know, the fun's there. Yeah. And that's what we try to do uh, as well, you know, to present all kinds of music, not the usual suspects yeah. at a trade show. But yeah, they do play great music at shows, do you? Yeah. Um, Wim's a good DJ. We uh, we enjoyed that particular Eindhoven. We've not heard them yet at this show. So whereabouts are you we're, exhibiting? We're exhibiting in room 507. Cool. In so room 507 at the fifth floor. So uh, it's open for a party. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. So audio video show at Warsaw, Sobieski Hotel, room f uh, floor 5, room 507. Exactly. You'll be able to hear the T7s. Yeah. So, thank yeah. you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank so you. that was Wim from Key. Who you were interviewing. Who I was interviewing. Not me. A um, couple of other things that we've were in the news. The first one was the Networks Acoustic... Um, go on. Uh, switch. Switch, yeah. Um, lots of controversy about switches, but you're either going to listen to them and think they work, or you're not. Um that's completely down to you. Um, there's more controversy when we post anything about switches or USB cables They've or anything like that. Kind of taken over from cables, haven't they? The whole Ethernet switch thing in yeah. their area of controversy. But like I said, listen to them, make your choice. Yeah. The other thing was the uh, EverSolo DMP A8 streaming amplifier, streaming pre, -amp pre amplifier. Yes. Get your teeth in. Get my teeth in. I'm breaking them in for a horse, you know. <laughs> uh, it's Mrs. Uh, Licorice's horse oh, from God, Wet Wang in no. East Riders of Yorkshire. Anyway, I know that Carl Heinz Fink from Fink Team and Bo the Fink and makes the Borg speakers and the Kim e speakers and the EPOS and blah, 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 blah. An absolute legend. He's had one of these and he's posted his uh, initial thoughts of it up on uh, Facebook and he sounds really impressed. So, if Carl Heinz is impressed, there's definitely something to it. Yeah. So, anyway, here's another interview. This time it's with Roman from Thrax Audio, who make really high end 
audio. Beautiful stuff. Really beautiful. And we usually only ever see them at the Munich show, but they were at the Warsaw show too. So here's me speaking yes. to Roman from Thrax Audio. So hi, we're at still at the audio video show Warsaw. I'm here with Roman from Thrax Audio. So yes. first of all, if you don't know Thrax Audio, we've been following the brand for years. Uh, usually we see them at Munich. Really interesting, high-end audio products. But I'll let Roman tell you a bit about the, uh, the brand. Well, the, before I started the brand, uh, I was a distributor for high-end audio for about 15 years. And uh, the brand started out of necessity for uh, modern uh, vacuum tube electronics, something that would be microprocessor controlled uh, with remotes, so some intelligence and the features that you would expect from the modern gear. And gradually the brand started developing all the different uh, products that would be related to high-end audio from turntables to loudspeakers. Okay for which we actually use some external consultants. Uh, principle is when you don't know, you at least have to know who to ask. So where does, where does the Thrax name come from? Oh, that's a different story. I was in a wine country in the Thracian um, wine yards. Okay. And uh, I went down to uh, one of the Thracian tombs and saw all the old um, artwork there. And then I started digging about it a bit uh, and then found out that Trax is how the Romans were referring to the people living in Thrace. Oh, right, okay. So you have like uh, Dionysus Trax, which means that Dionysus the Thracian, uh, okay. and so on and so on. Oh, and so then I said, okay, geographically we're in the same place, so okay. let's call cool. us the Thracians. <laughs> cool, so you, uh, your, your amplifier, 300 beat, the big. Yes, the power amp, the 300B power amp. Uh, it's a part of a 300B signal chain. We have a preamp and power amp that are using only 300Bs uh, for amplification. And uh, this is done with zero feedback, uh, just to show what it can be done with uh, tube technology and uh, modern thinking. I thought what, what I always found quite interesting about your amplifiers is, yeah, they're obviously valve amplifiers, but you don't have the valves on the top, everything's hidden. That's uh, first for safety, and second, the valves are very sensitive to vibration. So if you put them next to your speakers in the rack, uh, usually between the speakers, uh, they vibrate. So the more you isolate them, the better. Okay. So some of our gear is very heavy, and uh, the more sensitive electronic components, they actually float on dampers. We're using special type of dampers made from a gel-like uh, material, and that seems to show the issue. Okay. Also, we insert caps on the tubes, uh, especially on the small ones, uh, for phono stages and so on, that uh, use uh, Teflon and um, carbon compounds for damping. Okay. And it seems to work quite well. Okay, and you launched speakers, uh, they're, they're incredible speakers, by the way. Uh, completely different to pretty much anything you've seen before. Um, what we were doing is uh, we were researching the temporal perception uh, in speakers. And in most speakers, what you would hear first is the tweeter, then the mid-range, then the um, low frequencies. And we were thinking about how to equalize the um, low frequencies and uh, we came across uh, a guy in uh, Bulgaria that was developing studio monitors for about 20 years and he's using a um, system called motional feedback. Essentially you have a sensor on the diaphragm of the base unit and you monitor its acceleration and depending on the acceleration of it uh, you can correct uh, for the displacement and so on. So that's not DSP, that's... No, no, no it's all analog feedback. Oh wow. Kind of, kind of thing. This reduces the group delay and the bus basically comes in time together with the mid-range and high frequencies. For the high frequencies, what we do is we use a short horn that puts the tweeter slightly behind the mid-range drivers. Okay. And then you get the more or less equalized uh, temporal perception. Okay. Which gives more solidity and more holographic uh, imaging. So whereabouts at this show are you guys? Uh, at the moment we are with uh, RCM, uh, with uh, Roger in the Golden Tulip. Okay. But uh, we have only the turntable there on display. Okay. And is this, what do you think of the show? Uh, well, I just arrived. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for a drink, but there you go. Um, we've just, we've just grabbed rum at the bar. Um, but uh, thank you ever so much. 
Uh, we shall see you in Munich, I suppose, next. Yeah, in Munich will be the new goodies. Uh, we are working on some new stuff. Are you allowed to tell us anything? Uh, no. I prefer not to. Okay, cool. <laughs> Uh, we've been busy with the move. Uh, what is new is we have new premises, uh, new oh, okay. office space. Uh, we are renovating it, actually completing the renovation, new demo rooms. And then uh, end of the year, we're moving also the factory to a bigger place. Uh, we're expanding a bit. Uh, so what about your big markets? I wouldn't say big markets, it varies a lot. These days it's totally unpredictable. It would be Far East, then it would be US, then it would be somewhere in Europe. It's uh, We are a small company. We produce probably about 200 pieces a year. Uh, we are 22 people in total, but we make everything in-house. Oh wow. Which allows us to do things that other companies can't. Uh, like we can uh, manufacture custom parts, components. Uh, we are allowed to change things uh, in a small round. Okay. We also do a lot of R&D, okay. and we do some um, OEM products as well. Okay, okay. Yeah. thanks very much Roman, um, like I said, we'll see you in Munich. So that was me talking to uh, Roman from Thrax Audio. Yeah, and also in the news, um, something that Oscar got very excited about, I think he's got a pair on the way, um, the Meze Audio Imperium 2 headphones and um, this big news in the head world it's um sort of the refined new ones from them and they look stunning they're all the previous ones were like coppery color these all black and silver accents and a bit of an art deco design to them and very lightweight and very comfortable and new ear pads and they're a three thousand pound pair of uh, planar magnetic headphones that Yes, yeah, uh, going to be very Mezzi nice. Have sort of <laughs> seem to have come from nowhere. A few years ago, there were there were nowhere, and then they introduced their first headphone, and they were everywhere, yeah. weren't they? They're just incredible. They have taken the headphone world by storm. So our next interview is with Jeff Merrigan from Tellurium Q. Now Tellurium Q are a British-based cable manufacturer, and Tellurium Q sponsored all our coverage of the Warsaw show and it's always a pleasure to meet up with uh, Jeff and Pam anyway uh, and we always, wherever we are in the world we always have uh, Saturday night with them. Yeah we do. Uh, so this is Jeff, a very brief uh, interview to see what they were up to at the Warsaw show. Hi, it's Lynn again and we are here this time with Jeff from Tellurium Q and we want to say particularly a big thanks to Tellurium Q because they are the sponsors of all our coverage of the audio video show Warsaw 2023. It's a pleasure. So you'll see their banners on all the news before the show and of course all the reports that are coming afterwards. So now you are regular exhibitors here aren't you but you're not exhibiting yourselves but you are with your uh, distributor I'm a very aren't you? very active distributor Szymanski Audio they're everywhere yeah and uh, we just love being here yeah it's also is a fantastic show um, I don't recommend anyone except other cable brands obviously <laughs> obviously <laughs> to come to the show it's it's well worth coming to yeah it is and Bartek's a really good distributor he's oh, so he's amazing enthusiastic. you'll see at the um, stadium there's a, a really big area that is well you'll see it at the stadium yeah so mostly your cables are in systems over at the main stadium yeah uh, they're in three official rooms at the Sobieski where we are now but there's a lot of other rooms using them that's good um, just not officially. Yeah, no, that's cool. And there's that's a number cool. of rooms at Sobieski, and I can't think what they are, but Bartek would know. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, there are plenty of rooms good. around here, so that'll be good mm -hmm. for people to hear. And uh, yeah, excellent. Well, thank you very much, Jeff. It's a pleasure. So that was Jeff from TQ. Yes, it was. Very nice person. He is indeed, and so uh, is Pam. Yeah. Very nice people. Tellurium Q, thank you again for your sponsorship. Um, the final bit of news that I want to talk about is from Project. They've got the new Fono stage and a couple of step-up transformers. That's right, isn't it? It is, and it's the first time they've done step-up transformers, apparently. And I thought that was quite an interesting thing. And I think 
their first step up is very affordable um which is not a normal thing for step up transformers so i think they're going to be really popular with those people that are looking to move into low output movie coil cartridges without wanting to spend a fortune on a new phono stage now this segues quite nicely into our final interview and i was so pleased when it, we bumped into michael framer in the uh, in the lift at the sobieski in uh warsaw and he pulled out a record from his uh, satchel bag whatever you like to call it of a jazz record that he's just cut and it's the only time he's uh, up to now that he's actually cut a record i believe mm. um so we we he he passed in the bar and uh Thank you, Michael, for lending us your uh, microphone because we had a, a microphone incident at Technical that point. Technical experience, didn't we? Yeah, you? yes. Uh, so here's Michael Framer talking about his new record that he's had cut. Not actually him that's um, playing on there, but he's the guy behind it. And uh, he's a bit of a legend in the uh, analog audio world. Everything to, He knows everything about everything there is to do about turntables. So here's me speaking to Michael Framer. We're here with Michael Framer, the absolute legend that is. Uh, we are at the audio video show Warsaw and we bumped into Michael in the lift of all places. That's a loop, in, the lift. in the lift. And he was very keen to tell us, he whipped this out. Uh, it's, That's a, all I <laughs> it's a new record uh, that Michael has cut. Uh, and we asked if he'd be good enough to sit with us for five minutes and tell us all about this record. Uh, so, over to himself, who's going to tell you all about it. Himself will do that. So, Rufus Reed is a veteran bass player. He's played with Dexter Gordon, he's played with Thad Jones, he's played with a lot of people over the years, and he's an educator, and he also does live shows. So, I went to an event, an event called the New York City Jazz Piano Marathon in January with a friend of mine, because another friend of ours is a concert promoter, and after COVID, he was just getting started up again drawing concerts. This was a very little show at a piano showroom where they repair and fix pianos, and they also have a performance space there. So we go to support him, and uh, there were a couple of young pianists played, and they were good, and then all of a sudden Rufus Reed comes in with Drake with his big double oh, wow. bass. What's this about? And uh, Jim Luce, the promoter, announces uh, Rufus, and Rufus announces this young pianist, Kalen Cardello, who I had never heard, a 20-year-old kid. And they start playing, and it took about five minutes to hear like the soul of Bill Evans and oh, wow. uh, other jazz pianists that I know I'm, I'm hearing this and I turn to my friend and I say you know it's too bad this, this is being recorded because this is ma this is magical I, I hear a lot of music this is special he goes it is being recorded our friend Duke Marcos is engineering this in the other room so when it was over and the whole thing was amazing when it was over I said if it sounds great we, I want to, we have to put this out I don't want to go home tonight and tomorrow morning say oh, I should have done something let's just do this and my friend Robin says yes let's do it so we went over to Rufus and said Rufus we want to put this out how do we do it he's involved work at the work at financial arrangement I will do it uh, Kalen was for it we went backstage to see uh, Duke and Duke said it came out sounding great it was six channels and 96 24 digital no we didn't have a studio or eight, eight. <laughs> sorry we had what we had and he had good microphones and uh, so he did a rough mix for us and it was it was fantastic so is this the first record that you've uh, cut well I did one in the 70s a comedy record called I Can Take a Joke oh right okay you can, I did you not can know find that. that on eBay and you can find it at used record stores uh, some people are selling it for $200 a copy which is ridiculous but anyway this is much better so uh, <laughs> we worked on the mix for a couple of weeks and when we were done with the mix I sent it to Joe Harley the tone poet I said, Joe, you got any suggestions for uh, where we should place the two instruments on the stage? Which he did. We did another little mix of it. And then I sent it to Bob Ludwig. He was Bob yeah. Ludwig. He's a legend, not me. Okay. And I sent it to Bob just so Bob could hear it. What do you think? Bob said, I want to master this for you because in a couple of years, everybody's going to know this kid. That's how good oh, wow. what Bob thought of this. And, and I think that's true. So uh, Bob, and I said to my partner, you know, we didn't do this for the money. We said, whatever it costs, we're going to do it. If we make money, great. If we lose money, that's fine. We want to make this happen. Uh -huh. So, you know, Bob is not inexpensive. So, these are Bob's last projects. That was another upside of this thing. You'll hear one of Bob's last projects. Bob mastered it, and when it came back, he had whatever little magic he does. I can't tell you what he did, but it was that oh, much wow. better. 
And so it was pressed, it was, it was mastered at the Chad Castle's place at Blue, Blue Heaven Studios. There's Matthew Luthans on Doug Sachs's rebuilt of the Master Lab 2 system. Okay. And uh, pressed at Chadwick QRP pressing. And uh, we had Stout and Press do the jackets. Uh, a very good art director doing this, who was a friend of Patrick Leonard. You know Patrick Leonard? He produced, I he produced The Muse to Death of Roger Waters. Oh, okay. He produced all the early Madonna records, so he knew all the a billion dollars. And he, anyway, he, he's big to do. So I became friends with him. That's a whole nother story. And uh, he recommended this guy uh, who did this cover art. And, and it's, it was an iPhone picture that my oh, friend wow. Robert took. And it, it's like a Blue Note vibe to it. Anyway, this came out. It's, I'm so excited by this record. And where can people buy this record? Okay. You, can, you can buy it at a Music Direct, a Lucid Disc, and a Acoustic Sounds right now. Can you buy it through your website? You can. No, I'm not. I'm not selling it. Okay. But also, you know, Michael Forty Five, the guy in Germany. Okay. Yeah. Michael Forty Five. He talks slowly with a German <laughs> accent, and he's got the big glasses, and he holds up records and tells you about his records. Well, Michael has a store connected to Chad Castle and it's on his store so if you're in Europe you can buy it from his store and not have to pay from American shipping anyway that's okay so that's the record go out and buy it from Michael 45 or if you're in Europe or from wherever in America uh, Michael just said elusive disc so thank you music direct music direct Thank you ever so much for taking the time out. I know you're absolutely Thank you for having me. What do you think of the show? I love this show. You know, I love the demographic. It's young, it's families, it's, it's you know, kids come here. You go to the, go to the headphone thing, and it's all young people. Yes. There. That's their gateway drug into this whole hobby. So have you been over at the stand? That's, That's where I start. Today. I start, because if you don't go there today, I'm sorry, you go there tomorrow, it's so crowded, you can't get into any of the rooms. It was crowded today, but it was, it was better. We tend to leave that till Sunday. So we okay. do this, we do this, place today yeah. and leave the stadium until Sunday. That's just the only way we can do it. Yeah. But thank you ever so much for taking the time. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. So that was Michael Framer talking to me. Um, not many people know this, but he used to be a stand-up comedian and he does I mention I did not this. know that. Did you know? Not, no, not I, before. So. I did know this. He's sort of a nat, not like me at all in front of camera. He's an absolute natural in front of camera. He is. And um, very, very, very knowledgeable. And he's got to be the world's sort of most knowledgeable person of uh, everything hi-fi. We don't share common views on everything, but uh, I do respect him greatly. Uh, Last bit of news. Oh, We've okay. got um, there's the English Electric Network Noise Isolator has now been released. Now, we first saw this at Bristol when Alan Gibb, because English Electric are a cord company brand. Yes, they are. And Alan got a bit carried away demonstrating it, and we took photos of it, and then were told we weren't allowed to publish photos of it because he wasn't ah. supposed to have told us about it. So we have now published the photos that we took of it at the uh, Bristol show. Did we hear that? Yes, it was in the system. Yeah, I, I, there was sort of... When anything like this is put in front of us, there's a sort of, at the back of your head, that you're always going, yeah, yeah, whatever. It's a, another thing that you're going to plug into your thing. But I I heard it, a difference. Um, Alan's brilliant at demonstrating, by the way. But that as an aside, he did a, a brilliant demonstration with it. And I looked around the room and everybody else was going, oh, yeah, that's all right. Something happening here. <laughs> uh, so I thought that was it was it's quite an interesting product. It's not hugely expensive, I don't About think. 250 quid. Um so if that kind of tweak or thing is your thing, 250 quid. It's an affordable tweak, isn't it? Yeah. Go to your dealer, have a listen. If yeah. you don't hear a difference, don't, don't buy, buy it. it. <laughs> there you go. Um so that was the news that was. Um Touch wood, there will be no more storms. Um, apologies to everybody for being away from this usual Friday afternoon thing for uh, a couple of weeks, but completely unavoidable for us. Um, but we will see you next week. We haven't got any uh, more. Oh, we have got one visit to do, haven't we? Yeah, we've got a visit to do. We are going, well, we were supposed to be going, we're supposed to be there now, I think. Oh. Yeah, in Toulouse to visit Metronome Clister. Mm -hmm. um, but 
obviously with all the storm and all the chaos and what have you, we've put that back. So we're going there in December, but not this weekend. Next weekend, Eric is in Vienna for us and the High End Society that organised Munich and several other shows have got their Vienna Hi-Fi show going on. So he's going to be covering that for us. And then I think we've got another one. There's another Taiwan show in December that Jula will be going to for us. So, Fabulous. But yeah, we're not going to any more shows this week, <laughs> this, week this year. This year. Um, because we've been to quite a few, haven't we? I yes. think we've been around the world at least once. Yes, we have. <laughs> so that's it from us for this week. I'm going to mention it again because it's great. Buy this record. Buy this record. It's Slalom D. It's called Dance Waltz into Anarchy. The best tune on there for me is called Burning Days. It's uh, I Feel Kill Me. Uh, it's a bit poppy punk, uh, but it's brilliant. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.